In today's video, I'm going to be going over a brief overview of Guitar Pro 8, a couple of the menus and a few of the features that you can use to get started. So when you first open Guitar Pro 8, you'll be on this recent files tab. I've currently cleared all mine, but if you've opened or used any Guitar Pro files, they'll pop up here. And then if we move across, we've got our local files. This is where all your Guitar Pro files will show up, and you set that folder down at the bottom here. And then on the right hand panel, we've got a little preview of the files, which we can play. Next, we have My Songbook, which is another subscription service. You do get one free tab every day, but you can't edit or save any of these tabs due to copyright. I personally don't use this portion because you can just get the free tabs from ultimateguitar.com or some other site like that. Next one across is our templates. The templates are excellent if you're writing music constantly, especially if you use the same instruments. So for example this jazz quintet, if we go down to the bottom here we can see all the different instruments that it comes with and then we can even go full score. This would be a great time saver, like I said, if you're into composing music. And the last one across here we have the example tabs, pretty much the same as all the other tabs. Alright, so we'll go ahead and create a new file. And now we have this little pop-up, which is your add track. So we have a few different sections in this window. So obviously at the top we've got our string sections, which have all your guitars, your bass, and then your ukulele, banjo, mandolin orchestral section, a drum section, and then a MIDI section. So we'll just go ahead and create an acoustic guitar. And you can see on the next panel we have a couple of different options we can choose again. And then underneath that we have our settings for that instrument. So the information, we can change the colour, the icon that we want to use, the name, and then the abbreviated name. Underneath that we have the notation, tab notation, standard notation, and then the slash notation. And then next to that we can use a single staff or a grand staff. Then underneath that we've got our upper staff, this would just be how many strings, and then the guitar, and then we can change the tuning straight away from here. So let's say we wanted to make it half a step down. And then underneath that, we can change the sound. Tapra has so many different sounds, and you can honestly probably spend a whole day or two just going through the different sounds. I'd recommend if you find one that you like using and you use all the time, once you've set all that up in here, you can go down to this little save icon down the bottom and save that instrument settings so every time you open a new track and say you wanted the acoustic guitar with the steel and the steel mark then that would automatically be set up for you so we'll go ahead and create that so up the top here we've got our normal kind of normal kind of options so we have a file where we can find all our like create a new create a new file, new from template, um, open files, open examples, browse, all the closing, saving, you can import into Guitar Pro, um, export, export especially handy, um, the exporting as a MIDI or a PDF if you want the tabs, and then we've got our preferences window. So in here we can change our default template for a new document so you don't even have to go through the first bit all over again. Force the layout of the window so we can change how we want the page to be set up, force the zoom, all that kind of stuff. We can change how often that checks for updates. Then our interfa interface. In the My Info tab you can change your default for artists and copyright and stuff. The big one I'd look at in this preferences window is the audio slash MIDI tab. So you can change your device. I'm using an audio interface at the moment, so I use ASIO. Before that I was using standard. I do switch between the audio interface and standard depending on what I'm playing and how I'm using Guitar Pro. 
I would recommend if you are using like your computer speakers that you change the buffer size down to 512 instead of 1024. I found that I just had a bit of lag using Guitar Pro with that big buffer size and there's nothing worse than you're trying to play a song and then it freezes. So we've got our edit tab, that's all your normal kind of things, undo, redo, cut, copy, paste. You can change your automations and then the sounds. So if you want to keep your file clean, instead of having 20 million different tracks like some people do for each different guitar sound, you can just load them up over this side and then change them in sounds as you go. Track, you can add, delete, duplicate. Um, you've got some of your settings for bars, so you insert a bar, delete bar, change the clef, key signature, time signature, triplet feel, and acrusis. Um, this is where you get your repeat opens, repeat closes. Then note, we've got some effects in here. So you can insert a beat, delete a beat, change the duration. So you can change the different types of sounds of the notes. So you got your ghost notes, accented, accented notes, and then heavily accented staccatos. You can add a rest. And in the, our effects, so we have a few more different things here. That gives us more of the fun stuff, I guess you could say. Like the grace notes, trills, tremolo, legato, hammer-on pull-offs, bending, all that kind of thing. So our view window, here we can change how we like the page. So I've, I'll just get rid of these so you can see how it changes it. So yeah, horizontal, grid mode, screen vertical, screen horizontal, page vertical. If you're finding value in this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could smash the like button and hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bells on so you don't miss anything. This helps the video get out to the right audience. So then we have our play bar up here. So this end one will take you back to the first bar. This other one goes to the previous bar. So if we went down to bar two and then hit this one, we'd go back and say, if we went to bar three and hit the go to start, we'd go all the way to the end. And our play button, then we've got go to the next bar and then go to the end. This middle section jam-packed full of stuff here so we've got our instruments here so if you had more than one instrument you could click up here and they would come down the bottom and activate deactivate the count in. Very handy for playing for practicing and playing with songs. And then we've got our metronome and then next to that we've got our settings for the metronome so you can change the volume can have a metronome which will make it flash if I just quickly play this and keep your eye. You can see the whole bar flashing that's quite handy. And then we've got our count in so you can change how long of a count in you want. We have the note on the cursor so whatever note is highlighted here it will tell us what note is. We have the bar count so we're currently in bar one of three and then this is the bar duration because we're in 4-4, four, four, that's 4 beats. And then we have the time, this is just the length, the length of the song. Here we can change the triplet feel. And then we can change we can change the tempo just by clicking on that. And then we can put in a tempo, change it. We can go to a different note, change the tempo again. And then next to that is our time signature. They have a few common time signatures up here and then you can always do a custom one. Just to the right of that we have our loop feature. So if we turn this on this will just keep repeating once we get to the end. This is an excellent feature for practicing especially if there's something like a riff or a little loop that you're trying to get down you can practice and ramp the speed up. Next to that is our relative speed. So we can change how fast. So this is just a percentage of the tempo. So if we took this down to 50% and played this, that will make it 70 beats per minute here. These two combined together are an absolute excellent way to practice. And you can just raise the tem tempo yourself. You can even do this 70 to 100% option, which is progressive. 
So it will step up 10% each time. Across from that we have a new feature in Guitar Pro 8, you can insert audio tracks down the bottom, so if we click on this we now have the option to insert an audio track, which is very handy if you're transposing music, because you can listen to the track all in Guitar Pro and then write your track in here, or if you want to play with the song and you like want the vocals in your song but you also want the tab, excellent. Go hide our fretboard view. Show or hide a keyboard view. There's a built-in tuner if you've got your guitar plugged in to like an audio interface or something. And then our line-in settings. So you just turn that on up here. And then once you plug your guitar in, you can use the sounds in Guitar Pro, which I thought's a nice little feature. So just underneath like our file and edit bars and stuff, we have these three different buttons over here. This left one will be our editing palette. So this will give us all of our bar node and effects section at the top. We'll come down into here so you can visually see it. Might be a little bit easier. Personally, I don't like to have it clogging up my screen when I'm writing, but I've been using Guitar Pro for about 10 years. So I know most of the shortcuts for these kinds of things and just speeds up the process. So you see, if you hover over something on here you can see next to the name it's got quarter note next to the name in the brackets is the shortcut so if we wanted to change this for example we can use the plus or the hyphen key the plus will shorten the note so it will go to an eighth note and the minus will extend the note so you can go back and forward there the middle one here is our global view this comes up down the bottom this will give us all our tracks You'll be able to visibility, you can hide or show them if you have more than one. You can mute, you can solo, you've got your volume, automation, um, you've got your pan, automation for your pan, and then an EQ. You can also add tracks with this little plus down the bottom. This box on the right will be our inspector panel. Over here we can add our the information for this score, so we can add a title to this song, um, the artist, and what have we got, so we can go subtitles out and basically fill out all that metadata kind of stuff. You can change the musical notation, and then the sound mastering, and then show pedal board. So this is quite a cool feature. So you can change between the mastering tracks pedal board here or the current track. So if we go here, this is now the pedal board for the steel guitar. So you've got all these different options. You can add effects through here so you can change. So you can find a good preset and still change the sounds. Or you can make your own sound and just start from scratch. And then if we just flick across to this one, so this is the track specific information. So all those things we could change when we created the track are up the top here, like the color, the icon, the name, our notation, tuning. There's quite a lot of different tuning. So we open up the tuning dialog. You can change it to a seven string if you wanted to. You can change the type of instrument. If we go here, we've, you can see we've got quite a lot of different tunings. Probably not going to use most of them, but they're handy to have. You can create your own custom tuning and then save it. And then here we can change the individual strings, play the strings. You can add a capo down here, so we want it on the second fret, for example or even partial capos. If I'm adding, if you're adding a capo after the fact, if you've written something, 
always go keep the fingering. It will mess up the tab and it just, it's a nightmare to try and get back. So our sound section. So you always really want to use the RSE, which is the realistic sound engine. It just, that's how you get all these different kind of different sounds for the guitars. Otherwise you're just using MIDI and to be honest, it doesn't sound very good. Here you can add a sound. So this is what I was talking about earlier. If we wanted to change from an acoustic to a distorted sound, we can add an electric guitar distortion. And now we'll have both of those in here. So that's when we could go like edit sounds and then we can change between the two sounds at any point during the tab. So if we click on the three dots on the sound, we can rename it, move down, remove, copy. If you've either made your own sound or you like that sound, you can just go save as user sound preset and then that will save it. So every time you open an acoustic guitar or so I've done it here with the electric guitar. So distortion guitar and it will be right at the top so you don't have to go through all the different sounds every time. Interpretation, so we've got, you can change how the guitar's being played, palm muting, accentuation, auto let ring, very handy if you're writing an acoustic piece. That, so another cool feature you can use on Guitar Pro is the built-in chord diagram. So if you just hit A on your keyboard, it brings up blank chord diagram, um, you can choose which key, so say we wanted an E minor, for example. We can go type, make it minor. You can do all kinds of extensions, like add nines, 11 chords. You can play it here, and it will go through the notes. And then down here, we've got all alternatives of this chord, so you can change it up. So you can see it in different positions. This is quite a funky way and quite a good writing tool, to be honest. If you find you're struggling to write something, write something new, you can kind of just go through here sometimes. If you know what key you want to write in and just find weird voicings for the chords. And then once you press OK, it will insert it into your tab. If you'd like to get your copy of Guitar Pro, then I'll leave a link in the description below. If you are already using an older version of Guitar Pro, like I was, they're running a special deal at the moment, only until the 31st of July, where you get 30% off the upgrade price. Just a quick disclaimer, this is an affiliate link. It just means that I get a small kickback if you choose to purchase through my link. It doesn't cost anything extra for you, it just helps the channel out.